Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, food liquor, shills, death, slicers, peasants, vassals, minions, targets. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And today I want to go to the USA and uh, talk about some police violence. And as my regulars know, I don't generally cover uh, specific incidents of police brutality or uh, just the uh, police uh, tactics in the fields, particular incidents. I tend to talk about uh, police behavior, police brutality, uh, police uh, culture, uh, militarization of the police in broad strokes and trends. But occasionally uh, a story comes uh, along, even in the midst of all the insane uh, police brutality and police abuse stories that pop up on a daily basis. Occasionally one comes along that uh, I really feel the need to comment on uh, because of the implications uh, are so strong and uh, generally it involves uh, just uh, out of control behavior. And this story is like that. We have uh, six Texas police officers who were called to uh, the Gateway truck stop at 2 a.m. in the morning. And uh, more details have come out uh, in the days since the event, and that's why I feel more uh, comfortable uh, talking about this specific event because now it turns out we have an individual who was a uh, uh, was uh, cornered by police at this truck stop who was uh, reported to be armed but had a pellet gun, a BB gun. And the cops, as it turns out, knew this, and yet they uh, riddled this man, six officers riddled this man with 80 rounds, uh, reported 80 rounds. And, in fact, uh, the, the comments afterwards were, quote, he had no face, unquote. So they unloaded enough rounds uh, into his head that he was no longer even recognizable. And so the, the story just really uh, points out the, the frame of mind, and, uh, the uh, strange uh, frame of mind, strange psychology involved in today's police work where not only uh, is this uh, extravagant violence uh, seem to be prevalent, but uh, these officers take pride in it because uh, they also talk about uh, fist bumps. And we have a video that proves that just after these six officers uh, put 80 rounds into this guy, uh, they did a fist bump. And uh, this is uh, just adds another disturbing layer uh, onto this story, which has a number of disturbing layers. Uh, as the details come out now, there were so many stray bullets flying around that people in the truck stop uh, them, uh, itself had to get down on the floor and crawl to safety. And then we see in the, the film, they after putting 80 rounds into this individual who has no face, they still take the time to turn him over and handcuff uh, the dead body. And then uh, another part of the story that's come out uh, afterwards, and generally um, uh, witness reports are kind of dubious because we don't really know where their loyalties lie. But in this instance, uh, we have the Gateway Truck Stop CFO uh, said the police knew in advance the victim had a pellet gun, and he, he says, quote, when the police arrived, my gate guard informed the police that it was a BB gun. He told several of the officers, unquote. So it's pretty clear that they, they were told that uh, this was not uh, an actual weapon. And then the other uh, uh, partial uh, uh, witness account here is that uh, this individual was sitting on a bench uh, with uh, basically sleeping off a wine drunk uh, with headphones on. And when the officers got there, uh, within five minutes, they had un unloaded uh, 80 rounds into this individual. And not only that, uh, it, it turns out 20 cop cars showed up. So once again, we have this uh, scenario where what is what is with these cops? Don't they have any place else to go that when they get a, a call like this, uh, 20 of them can come out of nowhere and be there in a few minutes or seconds? In this case, I guess it's amazing that there's only six officers involved in shooting off these rounds. But uh, th and then we have once again this uh, scenario, uh, which is dominating all these police encounters, especially with this massive, overwhelming uh, firepower and the uh, uh, necess necessity of compliance at any cost, and that is turning the, the police into judge, jury, and executioner, the judge dread scenario, and that's what we see here. Yet again, in one of these disturbing trends, we see an event after event um, where the police decide in the field that this person is guilty, regardless of any uh, mental illnesses, regardless of 
the fact that a lot of these objects turn out not to be weapons, uh, the fact that uh, some of these individuals are well within their uh, rights, and um, certainly uh, in an instance like this, we, there's no reason why uh, somebody, uh, regardless of uh, what they're doing, should have any round shot at them uh, to the point where their face is obliterated, and then and then the resultant celebrations. So, uh, so there we have it. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video on this uh, this whole idea of this police state of mind, uh, and that's one of the things that comes to mind when I hear a story like this. So uh, once again, a very, very questionable behavior on the part of a police force, and uh, once again involving more than a few officers, more than just a rogue element, and uh, just some really extremely unnecessarily brutality against citizens, regardless of what they're uh, uh, allegedly accused of. I'm useful idiot. Don't you be one, too.